The Artemis Accords are back in the news again. More about that after this. So welcome back to another episode of Space Thoughts. As you can see, I'm changing things up away on how I how I do these videos. Got a I got a great new opening, and I actually have I've modified my ending screen as well. If you want to stick around for that after this video, uh, to see what I got, trying to break it up a little bit, um, trying new things, trying to keep it fresh. Let me know what you think down in the comments. So two states have signed two new states have signed on to the Artemis Accords, which is a very good thing. This is a very good thing because it shows that the Artemis Accords aren't stagnant after we got into a new administration here. Uh, they're moving forward. And I think also Brazil is also going to be uh, signing on to it. So uh, the two new states, of course, are the Republic of Korea, which is South Korea and New Zealand. And they both signed these within the past two weeks. So I think from a perspective of the future of governance in outer space, this is a positive development. This is not only about you know cooperation with the Artemis program on the moon, in itself. It's also about how the activities are going to be governed in the future, how these future activities are going to be governed. So basically by these countries signing on, they're signing on to the idea that, you know, the way, you know, the way forward is building up a little bit at a time and keeping the idea of free access open and, you know, promoting and promoting the idea of sustainability and of course, peaceful uses of outer space. I mean, from a geopolitical standpoint, I think this is extremely significant because it gives the Artemis Accords a little uh, more strength and more, more resiliency, for lack of a better term. In other words, the fact that you know new states are joining into are joining on to the Artemis Accords basically shows that this is a moving, you know, this is actually growing and sustaining itself, and and at a point when we really aren't doing those activities on other celestial bodies like the Moon. So the idea of these two states signing on and with, of course, Brazil probably signing on in the near future, this is a good that we're moving in the right direction. From a geopolitical standpoint, I think this, this, is, a good, this is a good thing to see, especially after the People's Republic of China and the Russian Federation announced their joint lunar research station. Now, I know right now they're trying to bring partners on board, and I did a video on that a few months ago. And basically came out and decided that, you know, that this whole thing about the Lunar Research Station has a lot to do with the current, the future state of international law. In other words, the PRC is promoting its own worldview. And actually, there was a very good uh, report by the Director of National Intelligence from that office on uh, called Global Trends 2040. And one of the conclusions that that report came in is that that it will be China and the U.S. are basically going to be locked in a geopolitical battle, so to speak, to basically decide what the rule of law is going to be. And I think, the, and in my opinion, the Artemis Accords takes a big step in moving the worldview of free access, sustainability, and such in in a positive direction. And the idea of this this lunar research station is more or less a pushback against this idea of the Artemis Accords. And it's always in, in and I say pushback, in other words, in, in terms of something to you know take away of ten, take away attention from while they build up their own their own coalition uh, for future uh, activities on the moon and other celestial bodies so again the Artemis Accords are still alive they're kicking and I'm hoping to you know I'm looking forward to seeing Brazil sign on uh, soon and other other states as other states as well just to keep them going and of course I'm really looking forward to getting back to the moon and I think it's really important this, this really emphasizes getting back to the moon and, and actually being on the moon and performing activities. It's great we can write, you know, something like the Artemis Accords, but until we're actually doing the activity, those, those accords are just going to sit there, basically. Because, like I, as I mentioned in a prior video, the Artemis Accords are basically the beginning, uh, a beginning uh, supplement to the Outer Space Treaty, and new rules or new agreements or MOUs or, or whatever you want to call it will be added to will be built upon the Artemis Accords and we'll build this nice idea of uh, outer space governments from, from that. So again, it's, you know, this is wholly geo geopolitical. I mean, it definitely, you know, pushes forward in a positive direction, the idea of rule of law in outer space and certainly gives uh, the 
countries like the People's Republic of China and the Russian Federation uh, the impetus to actually push back on uh, as they have competing worldviews. So that's all I have for this video. I know uh, I talked to you in the last video about Viasat's uh, lawsuit that should be filed today. And as soon as I have a chance, as soon as I get a copy of it and have a chance to look it over, I'll get back on here and just give you a run through on what, what it says and give you a few of my thoughts as well. So again, have a great day.